when you're a man of God or a woman of God or an angel after God's own heart, <laughs> you realize a few things along the road that there are enemies. There is an enemy that will always try to shut you down. Demon spirits, lying spirits, deceiving spirits coming through any area of darkness in you or in those around you. Anywhere where the enemy can get in and just hook into that darkness, he'll project himself through that area. It's, it's the same thing with a believer. When any, anywhere where you've yielded your life to Christ, Christ comes through that area and shines light through that area. Every heart Every mind is a projector of light or darkness. Um, if, if you're neutral, if you, <laughs> you're not pursuing God and you're trying not to do evil, that's basically lukewarm. You, know, you need to always be pursuing God, pressing into the heaven, pressing into the kingdom of light. You know, the kingdom of God <laughs> suffers violence, you know. <laughs> um, so my idea of pressing in is just worshiping God. And as soon as I decided to worship God every day and put all my heart, my effort into it, like just not for anything other than just I want to I want to walk with God. I want to walk closer with God. All hell broke all hell just broke loose. It was amazing. It impressed me. My car broke down. He, everyone around me is manifesting devils. I even got in the flesh and started like manifesting like pity parties. Oh my gosh. And the only way to step out of that, listen, if you find the enemy using you to like through your words, through uh, actions, there's only one cure. That is humility or just running to Christ, running to Jesus, running to the throne room of grace to receive help in a time of need. The only way I got sane from all the insanity around me, the problems, the, the people manifesting demons on me, even demons coming through me, it was, it was crazy. I was impressed. I haven't been in this depth of warfare but felt like about five years, was to just do what I was doing that brought on all the devils. <laughs> Worship, man. Full surrender to God. Pressing in. The only thing, that's the only way that I could feel free is when I pressed in even more. When I had nothing left to give, it was just, just me as like a, I just felt like an empty glass. Like just waiting for one more arrow to fly and just shatter me, you know, and then God will have to come and put me all back together. That's what it literally felt like when all the problems around me and the stress and the anxiety and I just, I pushed the pause button. It's, it's pretty cool. I, I tell my wife this all the time. I said, you know what? Just take those five minute breaks. With, when you need like a break from life, just push pause and just go in all sincerity, just go before the Lord and just love him. And that's what I did. I just worshiped God and I could feel everything trying to shut me down. And I just kept on doing it and doing it and doing it. And then, and sooner or later, like I got a breakthrough. Like I just, I just broke through the darkness that was around me. And uh, the problems, they, I just walked through the problems in the presence of God. Like God will never leave you or forsake you. It's just that we get distracted by the problems and sometimes we magnify the problems instead of magnifying the Lord with our soul, with our mind, the way we see things, you know, in our heart or our imagination. We just, we magnify the problem and then God sort of looks smaller whereas we should be magnifying the Lord through praise and worship and the problems appear as they are. Temporal and, you know, nothing to God. You know, Jesus can can solve eight billion Rubik's cubes in a row, all set differently, in just the the blink of an eye. Just 
by using the river of life, infinite wisdom, infinite understanding, infinite counsel, infinite might. And uh, he will do that. <laughs> All the pro He's a problem solver, you know. Holy Spirit's the comforter, so he comes into our situations when we yield to him, and he comes and he, and he fixes it. It may not be to our standards the way we might want something, but he's always working out the salvation in you so that like all the problems, they just, it, they might still be there, but they're not, they don't affect you the way they used to because you're only affect, you're only moved by God more than the things on the earth because you set your affections there through worship and you magnified him. So he's bigger than the problem. Whereas before when you were looking at the problem, the problem was bigger than him. <laughs> And so I had to figure out how to get my daughter to school. Like I didn't know what to do, I'm frustrated. And, and uh, I know I asked some people to help me and I thank you, like three people like, you know, donated. And uh, I, I went out and I got a bus pass and, and uh, I took a trial run to the school and, and yeah, thank you, I, 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 I cried. Um, when I opened three of the, every time I opened up my, I got that email saying that someone donated to help me and I, I literally cried. At first I, I cried from tears of relief and then I, then I would cry from like tears of, oh my gosh, you know, God is really with me because I can feel the presence of God and I, and I'm like, no matter how alone I might've felt, it's like God is always with me and his people, you know? There's something about just, uh, you give everything to God. You put all your eggs in that basket. And it's like, you don't, when you're in this realm, in these battles, like you don't know. You have to trust that God's gonna bring you through. And I remember like, man, taking a bus to, whoa, Holy Spirit's here. <laughs> taking a bus to the school. It took me an hour and 47 minutes. I left at nine o'clock and I got there um, at 10.47. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta take the bus in the morning to the school, come home, have a quick lunch, go back to pick her up, and then come home again on the bus. That's gonna take like two hours plus two hours, just two hours, this is gonna be like eight hours. And, you know, and I'm, I'm freaking out. And um, the, but when I went to the school, I, I I told them I said like, yeah, I got this. Uh, my car's broken. I need a job. And man, I'm stressed out. And it took. I left my house at nine o'clock, and I'm here. It's ten forty-seven. Um, is there any way I can get some pre-child like daycare or something so I can go out and get like you know a job and uh, get her in school? <laughs> She, needs, she goes to a Christian school. And uh, that was not my idea, that was God's idea. <laughs> so, uh, and they suggested we put her on a school bus. And I'm like, I never even considered that. And so, you know, I, I come, I, I, I'm just like, okay, that's a good deal, that's a good idea. And I went and talked to a few other people and then I went, I was going home again uh, that same day and I sat down in this pizza parlor and I'm eating, like I ordered two pieces of pizza and a Coca-Cola. <laughs> and man, the presence of God just, boom, he just sat on me. I just felt like crying in the pizza place. It's like, not the problems. It's just the fact that God is with me. You know, I was so stressed out from other, other things going on in my life that wasn't even the school or the car breaking down, just stuff before that, where I was, I mean, the day before this, the day before my car broke down, I remember sitting in the school and the Holy Spirit just sitting and visiting me as I'm just waiting for my daughter to get out of, get out of class. And I think, I, I think it's just because I've been pursuing him every single day. And he's, I don't feel him every time I, like I'm worshiping, I don't always feel him, but he'll, he'll, he'll just come suddenly and just surprise me and it, it just like brings tears to my eyes. It's just like, just letting me know that, hey, I'm with you. 
I'm with you in the good times. I'm with you in the hard times. I'll never leave you or forsake you. It's like I'm literally married to God. You know? What is that? Till death do us part. We do that, that saying thing when you get married. But like in sickness and in health, like God is always with us. Emmanuel, God with us, you know? And it's just like getting your focus right, which is the easiest and fastest way to do it is through worship. So he's just sitting on me in the school and he's sitting out, he's the peace is with me in this pizza place. At first I thought, I'm looking around and I look at, I said like, I wonder if these people are Christians and there's such a realm of peace in this pizza place, man. <laughs> I'm looking around, there's like Buddhist idols. I'm like, oh, okay, I guess they're not Christian. I guess maybe it's just the peace of God in my spirit that, that why God's resting here and ah man I don't know it just it encouraged me and then uh, then I get home and I'm, I'm, I did some more worship and I was singing that song put on the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness you know the spirit of heaviness <laughs> we think it's the emotions but it's actually the spirit and I got tears and Oh man, I'm an, I was an emotional mess this week. That's why I haven't made a video. I'm just kind of like processing everything. And uh, But the one thing that I gather from all the mess is we have authority over the atmosphere. We have authority. We have the choice to press into God. And the more we press into God, the more God presses stuff out of us and it manifests and it comes into the, sometimes it comes into the atmosphere when God's delivering you from something. Look at man, we all need deliverance until your face is shining Jesus 24 seven, you're going to be going through deliverance. You are complete in him, but let him complete, let him work out the salvation in you so that the, what the salvation can be seen. You know, Christ in you, the hope of God. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Holiness is just you're made completely whole and you completely shine Him without restriction. Sometimes I'll feel a restriction. I don't want to worship in this area because I feel like if I lift my hands, people are going to look at me and they're going to think something about me. You know, they're going to they're going to make fun of me. Well, maybe you still have a little bit of the fear of man in you. So you need to work out more of the salvation and walk in the spirit don't just live there and when you go to church meetings but walk in the spirit or you can't talk about certain things around certain people because they might get offended well the, the cross is an offense to what Greeks or Jews whatever all I'm saying is look it's, it's time to live as like what you were born again as in Christ's nature live as a uh, with Christ, Christ is spirit, right? So live as spirit inside your temple of the Holy Spirit, inside your body suit. And, uh, and you soon realize like 10,000 years from now, the problems that you see today, they will be like just, they were like vapors. They weren't even that big. The reason that they were that big when you looked at them when you were back on the earth is because you focused all of your attention on it without with by with by because you removed your eyes from the Lord <laughs> to look at the problem and you might have come back to the Lord help 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 but that was like like almost like in unbelief because you were so speared and so destroyed it's the same story that's found with when Peter walked on the water he's like well if it's you Lord give me the word and then Jesus releases the word and then Peter looks at Jesus and then he takes his eyes off of Jesus and then he begins to sink in the storm of in the storm of the world. And it's like when we take our eyes off of him, we do lose a lot of faith. Because faith comes by hearing him and seeing him. He heard the word of God. He had enough faith to step on to the water and, and walk above the storm of life. But when he took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sink. Sank. <laughs> Yeah, Shaba. So I don't know. I probably won't even upload this. I'm just kind of like, I'm just kind of venting, not venting, just processing what happened this week. And you know, I would come home and I would, I would just, I would feel, I feel God now. Wow, Neil is 
Thank you, Lord, for you're the problem solver. You know what? Let's just, I'm going to make this a prayer video. God, for everyone who's taken their eyes off of you and focused on the problems around them, I thank you that you're here right now. The Spirit of God is here right now to realign you, to, re, to refocus you, and you that, to remind you that you have authority to speak to the atmosphere. You have authority. Mountain, who are you? Be removed and cast into the sea. You know, every weapon that's formed against you, it will not prosper. <laughs> no weapon formed against you will prosper. Because you're hidden in Christ. Remain in Christ, who is the Spirit. And those temporal, natural things will fall off. You know, it may not always be to the way that you want it to be. But they will. Like, you stay on the narrow road and you die to yourself. And you take on Christ's life, the life of God. This is life more abundantly. And those problems won't affect you the way they did in the past. It's like... Uh, his ways are not always our ways if our ways are are fleshly and selfish or maybe if it's if it's not even the timing of God that God wants to release something I was just on Facebook like before I came to make this video I actually came to like to read the Bible out loud for an hour but I was struggling a lot with it but but uh, I talked about my mom how she prayed 17 years for my nephew to get saved and uh, and he died and I didn't I didn't know that she led him to Jesus one week before he died and uh, so I was <laughs> I was praying and God showed me him in heaven and I was praying in tongues I didn't care who was around me because this was more important to me and uh God showed me his face was full of joy, like peace, love, completion, he, perfection. He was just like, he was in utter perfection, peace. He was in heaven. And that kind of threw my theology off or whatever because I thought he died as a sinner. But I didn't know that my mom led him to Jesus one week before he died. She never gave up hope. And it wasn't in her timing. She wanted it probably, you know, maybe 10 years ago. Why is he not getting saved? You know, I'm releasing all these prayers. I'm praying. I'm just, you know, really bawling my eyes out in the anointing. Why? Where's the results? Well, we don't always see according to, you know, God's timing. We don't always have the full picture. But, you know, just keep on contending. Keep praying. But, you know... His burden is light. So you take all your burdens and all your cares, you cast them upon the Lord, and then you receive whatever His burden is. His burden might be just that you just pray, and that you re then you just release it to Him, because it's weighing you down and just robbing you of all of your energy. You know, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> But uh, I find that I, I do better when I don't focus on all the problems. I just walk with God when I surrender everything to God. I empty myself. And then I walk in the presence of God back through the problem. And that's what I did. I just, I just walked, you know, one step at a time. Dealing with all these little problems that popped up. And I have peace about it. I have faith again. Because I know that God is seeing everything that he knows I'm here, he knows the situation I'm in, and he also knows it's all temporal. And I just needed to get that into my into my spirit, into my mind, into my heart. Like these things are, I'll just do the best with what I've been given, and God will make it work for his glory. Because everything in eternity, it's like it's, everything that we do here, like the righteous acts, it will be written in eternity on the robes of righteousness that we wear. Everything will reflect God in heaven. So the even the problems, like the like what we give to God, it's like I don't know, I don't know how, I don't know everything, but I just know that like He will work it out for good. For those who love Him and pursue Him. I'm not sure why I made this video. I just have a feeling that a lot of people are <laughs> if I'm going through all this stuff, you 
probably are too, or you've probably been through this, or you know someone who's been through this, or you are, you know, you yeah, you've you've been through this. We're all we all go through the same path, and uh, surely if you're pressing into God, the devil is throwing arrows at you to try to shut you down. But my encouraging word for you is to keep doing what you're doing. The reason he's raging at you and trying to shut you down is because you are shutting him down with what you're doing. You know, the light will always displace the darkness. And then when the things come up inside of you, don't don't give in to them. Don't give in to the condemnation. Don't give in to the lies and the delusion and the rage. You know, just keep pressing into God. Keep asking Him to crucify your flesh. Put it to death by the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, not you trying to stop, but by the Holy Spirit. By you pressing into God and then God just renews your mind you know he renews you in the spirit of your mind but it's the holy spirit who puts it to death so it's a relationship with god the more you press into god the more god pushes stuff out of you you know i was talking to my wife on facebook messenger today and she's like i need to rest in god or i'm gonna die and i said you if you rest in God, you will die. <laughs> you know, and she's like, I hope it's a good death. <laughs> it is a good death. You'll put to death the deeds of the flesh. Hallelujah. He's the only one who can. You can't stop sinning with your human nature. I know I've tried. <laughs> Don't work. But I find that I go like long distances without sinning. When I just press into God and I live out of Christ's nature. Because that seed that's in me, I think John says it, it does not sin. That the Christ nature does not sin. And you just, you, every day is a choice whether you want to walk in your flesh or walk in your Christ nature. Because you've been born again, right? All things are made new. That's Christ nature. But the enemy tempts us to walk in our fallen nature. The one that was put to death. <laughs> you know, no necromancing. No going to the grave, digging up the old man and saying, okay, let's just... <laughs> let's <laughs> just a little bit of rage. Just a little bit of... I'll just use an excuse that the doctors gave me this... Uh, what do you call that thing where you, where you have an excuse to rage on people and freak out and have temper tantrums. I can't remember. Bipolar. It's the same thing, man. Saul had bipolar. <laughs> it was a demon spirit. How, what was the cure for bipolar? When David worshipped, when David played his guitar <laughs> or his harp, the spirit would leave Saul. Worship is the cure for bipolar. What is it? It's the river of life. When the river of life comes flowing through the heart, it pushes all those things of darkness out of the mind that triggers the mind to, that makes the body do those things. <clears throat> so it's the same thing with everything else. All the answers are in the river of life. Every answer is in the river of life. Answer to every problem. All of life's problems. <laughs> you know, hallelujah. So, Father, I just pray for everyone who's watching this quick little video. The problems that they're going through, they're going through. Although you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you don't have to fear anything, for God is with you. And His rod and His staff will comfort you. He sent you the Comforter, Holy Spirit, to comfort you because God knew that you were going to be going through the valley of the shadow of death. Because Jesus walked that path. And so we have to walk it too. He is the way and he showed the way. And he would always go off into the mountains and pray. You know, even when it was the night where he was to get arrested and hung on a cross for the sins of mankind as he was innocent. He was like sweating drops like blood. Just seeing the agony and the torment no, not of just not of just of his flesh getting ripped from his body but never ever experiencing sin his entire eternal existence never feeling never experiencing uh those unclean spirits like just gnawing away at his spirit 
depression, anxiety, bipolar. You notice how he died for those things? So he could give you the new nature, his nature, so we don't have to walk in those things. Depression, you know, cancers, all the, everything of sin, what came through the fall, went onto Jesus and he took it all for us. This, the insanity in the mind, they place a crown of thorns and he took that crown of thorns and places upon your head a crown of glory, the crown of life. You know, he took all the whippings, the beatings, the condemnation, so we don't have to walk in condemnation. We can walk in life eternal, his spirit. Everything that he took was the purchase of you to walk in his nature, you to walk in victory and glory, in peace. The fruit of the spirit is what? Love, peace? Joy, those things are available. It's the fruit of His Spirit. It's just a fruit of being engrafted into Him, <laughs> being born again. Hallelujah. Yeah, so uh, don't believe the enemy. Don't give in to unbelief. Unbelief is a demon. I've seen... I, it, it, I, I used to think it was just me. But you could, I could see the spirit of unbelief when you go for, to pray for them. I would feel it first and then I would see it. It's a spirit that tries to choke the faith of God out of people. And uh, you know, faith comes by hearing and faith is a spirit as well. It's the fruit of the spirit. So listen, we are in a real war. And the weapons of our warfare, they're not flesh. They're not soulish. They're mighty through God to the pulling down of all the strongholds. And they're, you need to put on the full armor of God. You, don't, you need to put on God. You need to put God in your heart and on your mind through everything that you do. You do before the Lord and in the Lord. <laughs> and He does it through you. You know, the sword of the Spirit wouldn't have been mentioned in the Bible if we didn't have to use it. If Jesus had to do warfare in the in the wilderness, and you know, you would have to do warfare too. He's he is the way. Everything that Jesus did, we do as a corporate body. So, uh, speaking to atmospheres, I might do a separate video on that alone, because the thoughts that you think are the thoughts that you think. The other thoughts come through from two different dimensions: the mind of Christ and the flesh. <laughs> The mind of Satan. <laughs> the thoughts that you think are just like the thoughts that you choose to think. But the other thoughts come from two different kingdoms. That's where prophetic words come from. You know, the mind of Christ, God will whisper something into your ear. Like, uh, this person needs prayer for this. You know, it might show you in a vision, you know, or you just go and you just go release or do what your father shows you. Other times, it's like, I think I should steal this. I think. You know, I, I want this, I'm gonna go steal this. Or uh, you look at a girl and you start taking her clothes off in your mind. Listen, that's the mind of flesh. That's the enemy tempting you. The thoughts that you choose to think, those are your thoughts. And you can hook into either one of those two realms. You can agree with God and step out in faith and speak what God is saying. Or you can agree with Satan and just go commit adultery. It's, you know, whatever, whatever, Listen, but I'm telling you through experience that we are in the middle of a battle and you are spirit, whether you believe it or not. You are spirit. So the battles, you know, your weapons of warfare are spiritual and they, you need to walk in faith. So get equipped, like put on audio Bibles and ask Holy Spirit to teach you how to fight back. And I'm telling you the simplest key, man, it's worship. Because worship is your, it's like, that's how you connect to God, man. I know we go through Jesus, the precious blood of Jesus, and in the most holy place. And, but I'm talking, like, it's wor when you worship or when you sing to Jesus, it opens your heart and allows God to pour his rivers of living water through to push all the dust away. And we know that dust is serpent food. Because that's what God cursed the serpent. He said, dust shall you eat all the days of your life. And we know snakes do not eat dust. They eat rats. 
they eat flesh. And uh, Adam's body came from the dust of the earth. <laughs> and then it sinned and came into a chaotic state. And that's what the enemy feeds on is the flesh. The fallen nature of man. All the, you know. So we put Jesus, Holy Spirit puts to death the deeds of the flesh so that you can walk as spirit and to wash away all the works of the enemy around you. But don't be surprised when the arrows start flying at you. That's why you're able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy with your shield of faith. Now get in the Word of God. Not just the Bible. Yeah, get in the Bible, but get into the living Word of God, which is Jesus Christ Himself. When He was baptized at the water, the Father said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So if you're in the Son, in substance, God's well pleased, no matter what works you do. Jesus never did one miracle when God said, when his father said that. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. God was well pleased with Jesus. <laughs> he never did one miracle or anything. So it's not about doing works. It's just about being in the son. And then the more you're, you remain in him, the more you, you receive the mind of Christ, you get to do what the spirit wants to do. You get to do what he wants to do through a relationship and that's when you start seeing works like good works not dead works of the flesh flesh is dead works good works are spirit works where God does the works through you and yeah so worship will open your heart and then the heart like the heart is the king's hallway so he walks through that area and just cleans it up he cleans the atmosphere so you can walk into a pizza parlor and you can sit in the, in the manifest presence of God in the midst of all your problems. Like I, you could, I used to say to God years ago, I'd just be sitting in my room. Uh, I was like, God, you could take everything from me, but just don't take your Holy Spirit because Holy Spirit is all I have. Apart, without Without Holy Spirit, everything is empty. Music is worthless. It's just a noisy, irritating racket for the soul. Listen, every single word that you receive is a magnet for your soul to pull you into life or death. Every single word that you receive is a magnet that pulls your soul either into hell or into heaven. That's why you need to pay attention to the words that you receive. You can't afford to receive a word that doesn't have any anointing on it. Because those words are spirit and life. And any words that they might be religious, but even the knowledge of good is still death. Good old religion. <laughs> good old <laughs> doctrines of man. <laughs> You know, good old, you know, trust me, man. You want it to only receive words that are just caked in the sauce of God. Even, even if, even my videos, if there's no, if God's not like plastering you with the anointing, if you don't feel the glory of God just washing through you, then just throw those words away. Just hang them on a shelf. It's probably, maybe it was just a man or because that has the power to make you more religious same thing with me like words apart from the spirit i might make a rule and a regulation out of that word and i'll try to control someone with it become like a christian sorcerer <laughs> you know <laughs> it's for freedom jesus has set us free so every word should either either lead you straight to him or those words will lead you and tie you to a man which is, that is not the way to go. You don't want to be tied to anyone except for Jesus Christ and what he's connected to. So yeah. Wow, this video is a little bit jumbly. It's all over the place, but there is, I do feel Holy Spirit. Uh, he's with me no matter how, how bad and how I butcher these videos. Yeah, it doesn't matter because <laughs> God is with me, man. And listen, 
He's with you too. If you would just open your eyes, open the eyes of your heart to see him, like all the problems just kind of fade off into the darkness. You know, you, yeah, Holy Spirit. God, we just lift, I just lift every single person that has pressed play. And I just pray, God, that you would release rivers of living water through their soul, through their spirit, into their atmosphere, into their families, and into their jobs, and into their schools. Everything that they do, God, that they do, that they know consciously that they are doing it in your presence. They're doing it before you, and they're doing it in you. And that we choose to walk a better way, which is walking in unconditional love towards everyone around us. And we speak those words to set them free. Actually, okay, here's some uh, bitterness. If you have bitterness, listen, you press play for a reason. If you have bitterness in your heart towards somebody, and you think that they uh, need to ask you for forgiveness, I think what you need to do so that you can be free is release forgiveness upon them. Jesus said, unless you forgive them, you won't be forgiven. I didn't say that. Jesus said that. So if you release forgiveness to all those who have hurt you, wronged you, listen, I've had people have hurt me in the worst possible way that can be done humanly, that I, that to me anyway, because uh, it seems huge when it's done personally to you. And I've chosen to forgive them as an exercise of my will. And then the love came after. And it wasn't my love. It was the love of God unconditionally flowing through. I just yielded to Christ's nature. And I realized that that bitterness that I was hanging on to towards these people who have wronged me and hurt me was just an, an enemy trying to use my body to project His will onto those people. But God like wants to project unconditional love through your heart and your mouth towards those who hurt you. So that you can be free. And then it releases an, like a like your prayers will go through and it'll just wash their souls. Like rivers of living water. Just because we were all, you know, enemies of God in our minds and in our hearts, but he still chose to unconditionally love us and save us. So it's the least that we could do is just to do that to his creation. Because all men were made in the image of God, right? And uh but all have sinned and fallen short of the glory. So how do we bring them back? <laughs> how, do, how do we get them to see God? Well, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Holiness is you made your, your soul has been made whole by God, by giving it to God, by giving your wounds to God, by his wounds, our wounds are healed. You give your wounds to God and you receive his healing in that area. So that the next time that you're hit in that area, it's just like it's like the enemy's hitting God's armor because you put on the armor of God, and it, the arrows can't get through. Hallelujah! I hope this makes sense to at least one person. <laughs> you know, repentance is a great thing. It's one of the best things you can do because if there's something to repent of, that means that there's something capping you off from going higher in the glory. There's something capping you off from walking in more peace. There's something blocking you from walking in more love, walking in more of Christ's nature. So when you find something you can repent of, you should be happy about it. <laughs> and just, just go against that fallen nature in your risen Christ's nature and just plow through it. Wouldn't you rather have God's nature flowing through you than an enemy of God trying to work, like trying to manifest through you? So, yeah, let's just repent. God, I choose to forgive so and so to say their name out loud. I choose to forgive so and so by an act of my will. And I release your grace upon them. I release favor of God upon them. I release the love of God upon them. I release 
the peace of God that passes all understanding upon them so that they can see you. Let them have the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you, the living God, and open their eyes to see the real Jesus so that they can be like you, God. And I just release everything and I nail it all to the cross and it can never come again and condemn me ever again. In Jesus' name, I choose to forgive. Yeah, it's just simple as that. It's just an act of your will, giving everything over to God. Hallelujah. When I, I had to go to Redding, California to get my soul healed, I wanted to go to, God told me to go there. I was going to go to a sozo, uh, I don't know. I don't even know what that's called, like a so what it means, Sail, saved, healed, and delivered, whatever. It's a word in uh, Greek or Hebrew or something. And uh, I had to go out there to get my soul healed. And I drove like all night. And I was so tired. And as soon as I went into the prayer room, the presence of God, because the church wasn't open yet, the presence of God just sat on me for like about half an hour. And I tried to pray because it's a prayer room. I'm like, God, I just want to, oh, boom, a wave of glory would just hit me. God, I have this problem. Boom, another wave of glory would hit me. God, I just, you know this person? Boom, another wave. Everything I would say, God was just saying, be still and know that I am God. Be still and receive. I know all your problems. But now is the time to receive my love. And I just sat there for half an hour. I tried to pray. I gave up. It was too hard to pray. <laughs> I just sat there for half an hour just receiving the love of God. And uh, and then when I finally did get to the Sozo meeting, which is, I think it was the last day that I was out there. I was out there for an entire week and every day God met with me. Like just powerful ways, open visions, like... Uh, encounters with God <laughs> I saw things that would that were going to happen before they happened <laughs> like the the glory dust thing broke out I thought there was something wrong with my eyes but I, I was just seeing it in a vision one week before it happened I was sitting in the prayer room again and like all these things like there's a wide open heaven there but when I was in the sozo meeting room this the lady was there uh, the she the minister, I don't know what, what, what they're called, but uh, she's like, okay, um, let's just invite Holy Spirit and <laughs> she's like, Holy Spirit come. And uh, uh, it's like, Holy Spirit, we just ask you to open a window in heaven. And uh, I can't even remember how it all went, but basically the presence of Holy Spirit came and I just, poof, I was in heaven. Uh, I don't know if I was looking into heaven or if I was physically there. I think, I believe I was there in my spirit. My, my, my body was touching the chair because I was in like two realms at once. I was on earth as I was in heaven. I was in heavenly places in Christ, but I was sitting in this place at the same time. Uh, yeah. And, and I saw these, I saw this, like, uh, these flowers. It was like in a flower forest. They looked like in human measurements, like 300 feet tall. And they all, from the bottom, they look like almost like tulips, but but like glorified. There's like sparkly light, the presence, uh, the love. This place was utter perfection. Everything there was full of life, like this sparkly glory life. I don't know how to explain it. And the air itself filled you with peace. The air filled you with love. The air was the love of God. That's the air you breathe in heaven. It's God's spirit. It's just life, peace, love, joy, all the fruits of the, like, patience. You could be there for eternity doing nothing and it's worth it. You would never want anything else. You feel so complete. And, uh, and she's like, uh, how's it going or whatever. I was like, I'm in heaven. I can see the flower forest. She's like, okay. Release all your hurt or whatever. L release the pain, everything of darkness that's in your heart and mind. Release it into that place. Because in heaven, there's no darkness. There's no shadows of turning. There's, no, there's nothing like that. It will perish there. And I did. I just released it all. I released the, all the yuck. 
And then I got like translated from the, like the ground looking up to, I was like above the flowers and they looked different, but it was still the same flowers. They looked like the lion of the tribe of Judah. They look almost like dandelions, but the things had glory, uh, spark life, glory, sparkly life. And everything in heaven reflects God by just the way it, it's, everything is a revelation of God. Even the robes of righteousness, they show the, they, they, they prophesy the righteous acts or they tell the story of the righteous acts that the saints have done, uh, the garments of praise, just everything is alive and it praises God. The flowers, they look like God. They have God's, like they look like the lion of the tribe of Judah. I don't know how to explain it, man. You have to see it. Of course, God doesn't look like a flower. I, I'm probably messing this up really bad. It's like trying to like measure something in a dream that you had, say, but because you can't really, the weight in a dream is different from earth. And it's, it's kind of like that. It's like a different dimension, a different world. And, but everything there is full of life, vibrancy, colors within the colors and the colors have life themselves. The colors are life. I don't know. And so I released everything into the into that area, and uh, and, it, and it's like I came back. And the higher you go in the spirit, the more you see God. The higher you go, basically, even just a simple little thing like this. Say you see a cloud in the sky. And then you look down at the ground, you see the, you see the grass and the trees and you just like, the earth looks so infinitely huge that you begin to ascend up and the earth begins to get a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller and look up to the cloud, the cloud's getting bigger, the cloud's getting bigger. The earth gets smaller and smaller. The higher you go, the bigger God. <laughs> he already is infinitely huge, but the bigger he becomes, and the smaller the world becomes, the farther away you get from it as you arise. And that's basically what I'm bringing to you in this video. Set your affections on things above, then on things on the earth, and the problems of earth will fade strangely dim. and they'll, they'll shrivel as you just enter into reality, which is the manifest presence of God, where you came from. And I just want you to know that, you know, Everything that Jesus is, he, he, He's formed in you. Now just let work out that salvation and it will be on earth as it is in heaven, through your earth. <laughs> well, God bless you. This video has went on long enough and uh, yeah, let's worship God. Hallelujah. <laughs>